Welcome to the Philips Intelliview Patient Monitoring Microlearnings. In this video, I will walk you through the basic operation of the Intelliview Patient Monitor. Let's get started. Right now, you are viewing a screen of an Intelliview Patient Monitor displaying data in demo mode. The screen is made up of different areas. This is the monitor information line displaying, amongst other things, the patient name. The alarm status area shows active alarms messages or alarms of symbols when all alarms are switched off. The measurement area displays the clinical measurement values, the waveforms and the trends and the clinical applications. The status line shows messages with information and prompts you for possible actions. And these are the screen keys. Some keys are permanent keys like main screen key and main setup key or the acknowledge key and others are smart keys. Smart keys give you fast access to functions. You may also find some hard keys as physical keys on your monitor device, for example, to start or to stop a non-invasive blood pressure measurement. Know that you know all the different screen areas. It is time that you discover how you can operate on the screen. Well, that is simple. It's a touch screen. Directly select the screen element you need. For example, select the heart rate numeric to call up the ECG setup menu. Select the ECG wave segment to call up the ECG lead menu. And to close the menu, you can use either the X on the top right corner in the window, or you can use the main screen key down below your screen. And also note that you don't need to close a window before you can open another one. Simply select another screen element. Now here you see the SPO2 setup menu. In the menu you can scroll down and up using the arrows. I now want to adjust the lower alarm limit and the threshold for the desaturation alarm. I have now selected the new alarm limits and I can close the menu. There is no need for additional confirmation. If you need to learn more about alarms in your Intelliview patient monitors, watch the alarm management tutorial. Oh yeah, it may be nice to know. You can also move a window. For example, when it covers up something you want to view while the window is open. Select the title of the window, keep your finger on the title, and then move the window away. The new position is only active until the window or menu is closed. And finally, I would like to tell you a bit more about our screen keys. I already talked about the smart keys. They give you fast access to functions, remember. The selection of smart keys available on your monitor depends on your monitor configuration. Here are some examples of common smart keys start or stop a non-invasive blood pressure measurement, zero an invasive pressure measurement, few trends, put the monitor in standby mode. And then when I scroll to the left or the right side, I can even find more smart keys. When I now use the main screen key, not only the open windows on the screen close, but also the smart keys from the first row are displayed again. The main setup key gives you access to all menus and functions in the monitor. That's quite a lot to scroll and select, but the functions you need most are ordered at the top of the list. Take for example measurements. You probably need this one a lot. Under measurements, you will find all the clinical measurements. For example, here is the SPO2. Well, that is exactly the same menu I showed you before, isn't it? You see, there are many ways to access functions, and I'm sure you will figure that out quickly. Well, that's it for now. Check out our other micro-learning videos too.
Thank you for watching. Welcome to the Philips IntelliView Patient Monitoring Microlearnings. In this video, I will talk about monitor alarms and how you can adjust and review alarm settings. Let's get started. First, I want to familiarize you with the standard visual and audible alarm indicators of your IntelliView Patient Monitor. Your monitor has two different types of alarm, patient alarms and inops. Patient alarms are red and yellow alarms. A red alarm indicates a high priority patient alarm. Take for example, an asystole, an apnea, or a serious oxygen desaturation. A yellow alarm indicates a lower priority patient alarm. Take for example, a pulse alarm limit violation. There are also short yellow alarms. Most of them are specific to arrhythmia-related patient conditions. Take, for example, an irregular heart rate or an atrial fibrillation. Inops are technical alarms. They indicate that the monitor cannot measure or detect alarm conditions reliably. Most inops are light blue, but there are a small number of inops which are always yellow or red because of their severity. Take, for example, when all leads are off for an ECG, or an NBP cuff has overpressure or an occlusion, or there is an empty battery. An alarm message text appears on the alarm status area at the top of the screen indicating the source of the alarm. Your monitor can be set up to display a flashing numeric when the alarm comes from a measurement on the screen. It is also possible that your monitor displays the corresponding alarm limit on the monitor screen more brightly if the alarm is triggered by an alarm limit violation. The audible alarm indicators of your monitor are configurable and they depend on which alarm standard applies in your monitor. Here, you hear the traditional alarms for the IntelliView patient monitor. You can adjust the alarm tone volume using the symbol at the top right of the screen or use the alarm volume smart key. Audible alarm patterns are repeated until you acknowledge the alarm or until the alarm condition ceases if the audible alarm indication is set to non-latching. Non-latching means that alarm indicators end when the alarm condition ends. When the alarm latching is set to on, it means that the visual and or audible alarm indicators are still displayed or announced by the monitor after the alarm condition ends. That is often the case for red alarms. To acknowledge all active alarms and inops, select the Acknowledge Permanent key. It switches off the audible alarm indicators and the alarm lamps. A check mark beside the alarm message indicates now that the alarm has been acknowledged. If the monitor is configured to re-alarm, you will see a dashed check mark. For as long as the alarm is still present, the alarm message stays on the screen. If an alarm reminder is configured on for your monitor, you will get an audible reminder for these alarm conditions that remain active after you have acknowledged the alarm. If the alarm condition is no longer present, then all alarm indicators stop and the alarm is reset. If you want to temporarily prevent alarms from sounding, for example, while you are moving a patient, you can pause alarms. Your monitor can be set up to pause alarms for one, two or three minutes or infinitely. 
If you don't see the pause alarms key on your screen, select and hold the acknowledge key and then select the desired time. It is also possible that your monitor doesn't allow a pause alarms. Remember to always leave the alarm switched on when the patient is unattended. Instead of pausing all alarms, you can also switch off alarming for an individual measurement. Let me show you how you can switch off the alarms for the respiration measurement. First, I select the measurement numeric to enter the setup menu. Then I select alarms to switch between on and off. Now the alarms off symbol is shown beside the measurement numeric. For each individual measurement, you can set the conditions that trigger yellow and red alarm limits. Take for example SPO2. I set the lower alarm limit to 88% and the desaturation alarm limit to 80%. Take in mind that when powering up the monitor, discharging a patient from the monitor or switching to a different profile, you must always verify if the alarm limits and the patient category are appropriate for your patient and monitoring situation. Check if your monitor has an alarm limit smart key to display an overview window with the current alarm limits for each measurement. From this view, you can adjust any of the alarm settings too. When you touch the alarm status area, the alarm messages window opens, displaying the current alarms. It is possible that you find the review alarms pop-up key. The review alarms window contains a list of the most recent alarms and inups with date and time information. When you select an item from the list, you can get an additional information about that item. Well, I already gave you a lot to explore in your monitor about alarms, didn't I? And I could continue to help you learn more. For example, how to improve alarm management in your clinical unit using our Alarm Advisor solution. But that is for next time. Check out our other micro-learning videos too. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the Philips IntelliView Patient Monitoring Micro-Learnings. In this video, I will show you how you can switch to a different screen layout and how you can modify the screen's content. Let's get started. Your monitor comes with a set of pre-configured screens optimized for common monitoring situations. A screen defines which waves and numerics it displays, and it defines the size and position of the waves, the numerics and the other elements on your monitor. You can easily switch between different screens during monitoring. When changing a screen, you only switch to a different layout. It does not affect alarm settings or a patient category, for example. To switch to a different screen, select the current screen name on the monitor info line or select the change screen smart key. Choose the new screen from the pop-up list. Let me show you some examples, but it can very well be that you have other available screens in your monitor. I choose big numerics. I can easily return to the previous screen if I want to. You may find some complex screen layouts listed in your monitor. These are screens designed for specific scenarios. Think about a screen for EEG monitoring or continuous 12 lead ECG monitoring. Or monitoring a preemie, 
for possible neonatal events. If you do not want to change the entire screen content, but only some parts of it, you can substitute individual waves or numerics or high resolution waves or trends. Just know that these changes cannot be stored permanently in monitoring mode. Let me show you how you can change a screen's content. Select an element or an empty place on your screen. I choose here in this example the temperature measurement. From the menu that appears, you select change wave, change numeric or change high resolution trend. In my case, I select change numeric at the end of the menu. Select from the menu what you want to display. I choose to display a timer. You can see the temperature is now displayed somewhere else on the screen. The changed screen is now shown with an asterisk in the monitor info line. If you open the changed screen menu, the changed screen is shown linked to the original screen and also marked with an asterisk. You can always return to the original screen if you want. After a patient discharge, the monitor's default screen is shown. Your modified screens are still available in the change screen menu. Only if you switch off the monitor and then turn it on again, the modified screens are erased from the monitor's memory and they cannot be recalled. Well, that's it for now. Check out our other microlearning videos too. Thank you for watching.